G'day guys, Solid here. Hope you're all doing well and welcome back to another episode of Venture News. We've got a lot of great topics to get through. We've got Royal Enfield's 450 Himalayan back in the news. Finally, it looks like KTM are bringing serious updates to the 690. Ural's sidecar as well gets some tasty updates. Triumph have released new information on their MX and Enduro motorcycles. And lastly, I wanna talk about some hot gossip, but you'll have to wait till the end for that. So let's get into it. Start it up. Let's start out with the 450 Himalayan. Now, if you've been under a rock, this is Royal Enfield's brand new Himalayan. It's a 450cc liquid-cooled motor. It's claimed to be making 40 horsepower or between 35 and 40 horsepower and just over 40 newton meters of torque. That's a bold claim and we'll have to wait and see whether that's true. But if it is, it really does have the recipe for a very special motorcycle. So what is that release date? Well, it's rumored to be November 2023. That's right, Q4 of this year only a few months away. So that's super exciting news. Of course, I do need to point out that's not confirmed by Royal Enfield. They're staying very tight-lipped about this, but that's the rumor going around. And generally with these rumors circulating Royal Enfield, they tend to be correct because they're a very leaky organization. Case in point, there's been pictures snapped of the production-ready version of the 450 sitting in their warehouse. Very exciting that we could see this fantastic new motorcycle released in just a couple of months. And I think a lot of people's hopes are pinned to this being the rally unicorn that a lot of people want. Of course, this isn't going to be the most high performance, hardcore premium motorcycle out there, but it's going to be a value orientated 450 single with some decent off-road capability. And that's a recipe that a lot of people really want. I'm very excited to see what happens. Will Royal Enfield deliver or will they fall short? Let me know in the comments section down below. A 2025 model has been spied. That's huge, huge news. So what can we tell from these spy shots? Well, actually quite a lot and it's very, very exciting. Let's get through the boring stuff first. That's the aesthetics. Clearly, the aesthetics are different to the current model. It's basically a nip and a tuck. It's nothing revolutionary, so I don't want to get bogged down too much. Other than to say it looks like a nice refresh, but it still looks quintessentially like a KTM. But this could change. It's a 2025 model as well as anything else on the bike that you see. The big news is that motor. To my eyes, it looks like we could be getting a bump in engine displacement, which is really exciting. Why would they be doing that? It's probably to get past emission standards because if you're going to restrict the current motor, it means that KTM would have to sacrifice power. That would go against their ethos of ready to race. They can bump the power, restrict the engine, get it past Euro emissions, which means this is available in Europe and everybody wins because the rest of the world also gets the power bump. How do we know that there's going to be a bigger motor and also what displacement will it be well it's impossible to tell that from pictures but easy guess is it's going to be over 700 cc's where it lands over the 700 cc's is anybody's guess i'd likely say that we're probably going to see a small bump in displacement nothing crazy so it'll probably be just over or in the mid 700 cc's but who knows they could go the whole 100 cc's and make it a 790 enduro but that would start a lot of confusion with the 790 adventure. But how do we know it's a bigger motor? Well, the first indication to me is you can see that that is a larger radiator than the current 690. It's also got a different fairing around it to allow that extra size. The other giveaway is that there's a new clutch cover and generator cover on that motor. It's clearly distinct from the current 690 enduro single motor. That's definitely the 690 motor that it's based off, but it does have some differences. So that lends more credence to this being a bump in engine engine displacement rather than not having any engine updates at all or it being a completely new engine. The other giveaway here is the mountings on the engines as well as the undercarriage. You can see that it is different to the current 690 as well. So things are definitely in different spots. What does that tell us? Well, it means that the main engine castings are also highly likely to be brand new as well. But what hasn't changed on that motor is the cylinder heads. You can see that those are basically the same as the current 
1.690 enduro single. So what does that tell us about how they're actually getting this extra capacity? Well, it means they've probably got two options to go with. They're either going to go with a larger bore or a longer stroke or a combination of both. That generally yields you a much torquier experience down low. So those are the major indications that we're looking at a 690 enduro R with an upgraded 690 single motor in it, likely to be making new power, which is pretty damn exciting because if you think about it, the 690 really hasn't had any significant updates since its release in 2008. The rest of the stuff on the bike looks like it's straight off the current 690. The wheels, the WP Explorer suspension, all that stuff is likely to be taken straight off the existing model. Whether that will change upon its release in a couple of years, who knows? But at the moment, you gotta keep in mind these are test motorcycles a lot of this or all of this could change in the next two years. There's also the option that these bikes could be seen in 2024 rather than 2025 as in 2024 KTM is set to release a whole pile of new bikes. But looking at how early stages these prototypes are, I do tend to think that we might not see these bikes in 2024. Of course, that still is a possibility, but I think that we're more likely to see these in 2025 but I'd love to know what you guys can see because often other people with eagle eyes will pick up stuff that I've missed. So if you've seen something significant or important in these spy shots, please chuck it down below for everyone else. And if we quickly look at the Super Motard, what you'll notice is a standard accessory for any KTM rider. And that's your box of spare parts that you absolutely must take with you on every ride. I want to talk about the Ural. I haven't really done that on this channel yet because I haven't really had the opportunity, but this is a motorcycle made in Kazakhstan. You'd recognize it everywhere because it is a very famous sidecar motorcycle. This bike has been in production basically in some form or another since 1953. So it's definitely got the heritage to go with those old school looks. The engine isn't a powerhouse. It's a 750cc opposed twin making roughly 41 horsepower. So it doesn't make a huge amount of power it's definitely a bumbling along enjoying the scenery kind of bike it's not break your neck performance specs so if that's your kind of thing this probably is not the bike for you but if you like exploring the back roads and just a gentlemanly adventure this really could be an interesting bike to go with I mean what other bike can you carry a spare wheel along with you with two-wheel drive so it's actually pretty capable off-road and it has a reverse gear as well. It's a bit quirky, but some people do really choose them as adventure motorcycles because you can pack an awful lot. And this kind of bike has always intrigued me as an option to take the family with me. And Ural have just made it even better with the ultimate version they're calling the Expedition, which is basically them throwing the kitchen sink at this motorcycle from the accessory catalog. So now you're getting dual wind protection. You're also getting upgraded crash protection, extra carrying capacity with additional luggage racks, and of course, a whole host of new colors. The biggest update though for me is the suspension. They're upgrading from the Sasha's standard suspension to Nitron suspension, which is meant to be more off-road capable. It's a really interesting option. It definitely has me thinking, hmm, maybe if I win Lotto, I certainly have space with my new shed now. Could I fit a sidecar Ural Expedition version? I'd love to know your thoughts, so chuck them down below. Next up, I wanna talk about Triumph and their adventures in building an MX and Dual Sport motorcycle. Now, before you get excited with that Dual Sport term, I think that's just US media outlets. They tend to call Enduro motorcycles Dual Sport. So I think that's what they're referring to when they say Dual Sport. They're referring to a bike that will be competitive to the 350 EXEs, the Beta 390RRS, those types of motorcycles. But it is very exciting news that they're really moving forward with this development. They've released teasers of both both the motor in development now, as well as the chassis. So things are really moving along swiftly. Now, why am I so excited about this when I tend not to do any MX riding, although I do enjoy the odd ride on an enduro motorcycle? Well, it's because this is a fresh manufacturer into that particular sport and not just any manufacturer, but Triumph. They're a big motorcycle company with a lot of R&D facilities that can really move into this category with force. And they're also not constrained by the things that pre-existing 
enduro motorcycles and MX motorcycle manufacturers are. So KTM have a way of doing things. Yamaha have a way of doing things. But Triumph, they have an opportunity here to think a little outside the box and really offer something a little different. And I have it on good authority from people in the industry that these are going to be premium motorcycles. They're not going to be value orientated motorcycles. Triumph are really going to be making these premium ready to race motorcycles that are going to be very competitive. And that's what it says in these media releases. We don't get any official specs of the motor or the chassis. All they say is it's going to be light, compact and competitive. We have to assume that power figures and performance figures, weight are going to be very competitive with the likes of KTM with their three brands, as well as the Japanese and the Italian offerings like Beta. The other really harebrained tinfoil hat version of me gets excited as well because if Triumph moves into the MX and Enduro range and it's very, very popular and people start demanding more of a dual sport motorcycle from them, something that's a little more detuned, think the CRF 450L, maybe Triumph will listen and start to head in that direction. And with them making the 400cc Scrambler single already, it really does seem like they're paying attention recently to what the market is asking for. I sure hope that's the case, but I'd love to know your thoughts. Are you excited for an Enduro motorcycle or an MX bike from Triumph? Or are you hoping they get into the dual sport game and we see a whole fresh lineup be injected into what's been a pretty stagnant area for a long, long time? So the last story is one that is pure gossip. This is just word on the street, but it's from people I trust. And the word is that Honda are bringing the CRF 450RL back to Australia. Hallelujah. An enduro bike with some dual sport tendencies that can be ridden to the trails and can be ridden hard. When I test rode one, I absolutely loved it. I almost bought it, but what made me pause was the health crisis and the ECU problems. In first gear, when you back off the throttle on that bike, the early models, it cut off the revs really hard and that really made it a frustration to ride. Now, Honda have said they've smoothed that out over the years, but I'd love to know from owners, do you still have to swap out the ECU for a Vortex ECU to fix that problem or have Honda actually addressed that? I'd love to know. The thing that really was the nail in the coffin here in Australia with Honda and the 450RL as it's now called is it came out here as a CRF 450L. So that confused a lot of people. They thought it was going to be like the 650L and the 250 or 300L. So a wholehearted dual sport. And when they found out that it had surface intervals similar to an enduro bike, which it basically is, they were very confused and it kept buyers away. Also, the price tag wasn't really encouraging. When it first came out, it was basically KTM prices and it was a Honda. People, when they looked at the price tag, just went to KTM, Husqvarna or Beta instead, rather than going with their much heavier Honda. So the Enduro people were a little bit confused and were asking themselves, why am I going to spend KTM money on a Honda? So it was a little bit of a marketing faux pas. And then to make matters worse, it was clear that Honda were not confident in the bike in Australia because they started really cutting the price price of this bike significantly very early on. So by the time this bike had finished being on sale, they'd cut the bike by about three or four thousand dollars. They didn't do themselves any favors, but it's coming back to our shores, which I think is very exciting because it's really well suited to our Australian conditions. Decent power, super off-road capable, still an enduro bike at heart, but it's got dual sport tendencies and it really, with the right tinkering, can be a fantastic ultralight adventure bike. So I, for one, am very excited excited that this is coming back to our shores. Of course, this is no official confirmation. Love to know your thoughts, Aussies. Are you excited to see this come back to our shores? I'd love to know your thoughts on any of the topics we talked about today, or is there a bike that I keep missing that you'd love to hear about? Chuck those down below as well. Don't forget to hit that like button, share it around with your mates, consider subscribing and joining this fantastic off-road community. And as always, don't forget to stay shiny side up and I'll see you in the next one.